The lecture processing project is really all about letting people search inside videos. Conventional search engines are text-based, so Google or Yahoo, things like that. You type in your text query and you find the documents that you're interested in, and that's great. But with video, you can't do that. And we're living in an era where there's more and more videos are becoming available, um, but it's hard to find for little snippets that you might be searching for inside the video. So we're using speech recognition, uh, information retrieval technologies to help process the videos so that then people can search them using conventional text-based mechanisms. The way we process a lecture is a series of steps. Uh, first, we actually uh, chop it up into little 10 second increments and then we run a phonetic recognizer over these chunks to find out where the speech is. Once the speech has been recognized, we put all the pieces back together and then we can index it uh, with a conventional text-based search engine. My group starts processing these materials once we have actually speech transcribed into uh, text. And what we are doing is trying to find structure in it, because if you have uh, textual material like written, you have sentences and paragraphs and sections. When you're looking at the transcript, you don't even have sentence boundaries. So in order to be able to support efficient retrieval, you need to know what is a proper unit. So that when you know user asks some you know, recursive function, you know which part to show to him. So our goal is to find the structure in the text, in the transcript. So we have a publicly available site, and when you go there, uh, it has a uh, video field, but it also has a conventional text field where the user can type in their keywords they're interested in, or perhaps select a subset of the courses they want to search on. So if they type in the, the query terms, uh, they'll get a set of hits showing the lectures that somewhere in the lecture, the keywords that they were looking for occurred. And if they find something they're interested in, they can click on any word at any point and it will start the video up at that exact spot and below it you'll see a synchronized transcript um, moving along with the video, just showing the output of the speech recognizer. The, the left side of that piece of plastic is only positively charged, so here it is. The system so far had around two million and hits. Right we were surprised to find how much people like it and they really want to have it expanded in the following direction so that they can download their own lectures. Right now we have a pre-recorded set of lectures. We just let access those and we got requests from all parts of the country uh, ranging from doctors to uh, legislators who are asking us to use similar tools for their own uh, video libraries. I think the technology has two uh, major applications. Uh, one is for accessibility, so for example for hearing impaired students, uh, video by itself is not that useful. So if you had text to go along with it, that would be very useful for people. Also very useful for non-native speakers who might have trouble following the speech. Then there is another, I think, interesting direction is to try to sort of solicited help from users to improve the transcripts because recognition would never be perfect like in the next uh, 10 years. There always will be some mistakes and it would be really cool if they, the same way as Wikipedia is created when just users are adding their materials and they can do the same corrections for lectures and maybe add their notes and, and whatever information they found useful so it's like sort of a you know, source where, which is evolving and uh, improving all the time.